in looking at the book of Joshua. Some months ago when this service was scheduled, this is the text that the Lord gave me for this Sunday. And so I start in Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, verse 9. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him, and the sons of Israel listened to him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Let me read this portion again, starting at chapter 34, verse 9. Now, Pastor Brian, the son of whomever, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, for the Lord had laid his hands on him. Verse 1 of chapter 1 of Joshua. Now it came about after the passing of Pastor Gregory, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Pastor Brian. My servant, Moses, has gone. I've taken him home. Now, therefore, you, Pastor Brian, arise, get ready, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. When I thought about coming to Rowlett this morning, I don't know all the streets around this great church but possibly you do. And the suggestion I feel that the Lord gave me was to share with you, perhaps you're a photographer. And so I want to encourage you to make a picture of all the neighborhoods within a mile of this church. And then I would encourage you with the pastor's approval to make one of those pictures and put all the neighborhoods on it. And put this title up there. This is our Jerusalem. This is where God wants me to pray about and speak to and intercede for and go to again and again and again. As you read on in the book of Joshua, you know the story so well. As they crossed the Jordan, the Bible says, when those carrying the ark put their foot into the water, when they stepped into the edge, that the Bible says the waters rolled back. Now, I have never been to that part of the world and don't know whether I ever will be, but I've never seen or never been any place where when you put your foot in the water, it rolls back. And so I can imagine, like some of you all, I know Pastor Brian well enough, if he and I were in that group, we would be sticking our hand in that wall water just to see what it felt like. But the Bible says they walked across on dry ground. God prepared the way. He not only gave them directions, he told them what to do. They followed through, and he prepared dry ground. The last several days, we've had a lot of rain. Every piece of soil is wet, and that's good. I'm happy. I'm thankful, and I trust you are also. But in this situation, the biblical situation, they had a task in front of them, and so do you. God has called you specifically to maintain your commitment and to continue the path that God has called you on. This is a continuous journey. We haven't come to a drop-off point, a dead stop point. We're not running down different avenues like a wagon wheel. We are staying the course that God has called you to. In just a little while, we're going to do a blessing over this pastor. The Lord already gave me something to do and to say and to read. The board of elders, deacons, they have already supplied a prayer shawl. 
We are here to take care of business because God wants us to continue in the path that he's called this church years ago and he hasn't changed his mind. What we've got to do is do what the word of God says. And here's what it says. Verse 3, it says, Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness, and then he gives all the territories. And then he says in verse 5, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. If you and I will decide every day, not just one day, but every day, that we're going to do what Jesus told the disciple to do, and the disciple's response was, At thy word, Lord, we will do it again. And then the rest of the story is when they were obedient to what Christ's directive was, then they fish. There were more than they could carry, and they had to bring in other boats. I believe that the days ahead are better than they ever have been because God is in it. The challenge is that we need to stay connected with God. If we're going to have a stronger community spiritually, and I'm just talking about a word, I'm talking about Rowlett, Texas, then we're going to have to stay connected to him and connected to leadership and connected to each other as we build each other up in the faith. And here's what the word says. Verse 6, be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go or prosper. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from you day or night. Meditate on it. The challenge, my friend, to myself, to you, is that we learn to discipline ourselves to read and to meditate and to think upon the things of God. There is so much overload of garbage everywhere we go. We're not exempt from it. I guarantee you, when you and I leave the building, when we leave the property, we walk out that door, the devil himself is out there trying to do something to destroy us. And why people just sit around and mess around and listen or watch garbage that is destructive to their life doesn't make any sense. But when we dabble with the world, the world will suffocate us if we let it. But we've got to decide that we're not going to depart from the word of God or the instruction of the Lord, and we're going to meditate on his word so that we can be doers of his word, so that as we throw out the net, that we will see unto the Lord the increase that he deserves. I asked people the question because it came to me a couple years ago myself. Am I mad at the people who prayed for me before I got saved? Have I ever taken time to thank them for their efforts in helping me to get saved? I know the Holy Spirit draws us. I know we have to give our will to him. I know we have to surrender. I listened to one of the uh, uh, guys who were talking about testimony. I think it was Zach. And so I wrote this word down, self. S stands, we've got to surrender. E, we've got to empty ourselves. L, we've got to lift up our lives and our thinking, our joy and everything to Jesus. And F, we've got a fellowship with believers. If we're going to be strong and doers of the word, not just hearers or discussers, then we've got to be in fellowship with the body of believers so that we can become what Christ wants us to become. Verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. Invariably, you hear people say, well, I'm uncomfortable telling others about Jesus or talking to people about Jesus. Let me encourage you. The woman at the well, John 4, after Jesus and her had a conversation, what happened? That woman left without any further training, without any additional printed material, without anyone telling her what to do, without a Thompson chain under her arm, 
without any kind of additional CDs or radio or TV programs. She went back to the town where she came from and told them about this man. What we've got to do is be determined that we're going to be, as we say, sold out to Jesus so that Jesus is the center of our life. Not this, 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 and then Jesus. we got to make Jesus the center of our life. He's coming. He's coming. I don't know when he's coming. I don't know if he's going to take me to meet him before that. The point is he's coming. And so what my decision is, or yours needs to be, we all have to decide what is it going to take. What do we need to adjust? What do we need to tweak? What do we need to turn off so we can turn on more of Jesus? so that we become what Jesus wants us to be. I believe, friend, that there is someone in your world every day, every day, that we can invest the hope that is within us. All we've got to do is decide when we wake up, when our morning starts, and say, Jesus, not my will, but thine be done. I love that the church has a specific prayer time where you can come together as a body of Christ and spend special time in prayer. It's biblical. It's, it's important. It's something that's going to make you stronger and the church stronger and more effective. But we've got to do something in our own life that we've got to do something that says, yes, I need to do exactly what Christ wants me to do. Last evening, I was at an activity with Linda, and we sat down, and the lady that we're talking to, she flew in from Chicago to be with family, not our family, but someone else's family we're with, and I, I asked her, what does she do? She's an internal auditor, making people give an account for everything. Those people bring grief and agony and gloom and despair in your life. But friends, I tell you what, if we'll spend time in the Word of God, and God will make some adjustments. Sanctification, the process of growing and maturing in Christ, is both ugly and it's good. But we've got to decide that we're going to let the Spirit of God control us so that we are effective in what we do and who we speak to. He says in his word, be strong and courageous. Do not trouble, tremble, or be dismayed. For what? The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What the street is over here or down this way or that way or the other way, Jesus will be with you. What we've got to do is decide over and over, day after day, that we're going to live for Christ. We've got to prepare ourselves. We need to dedicate ourselves. And then there needs to be an outward evidence that Christ is doing something in our lives. How? Develop a pictorial of this community. Pray, pray, pray. Develop a prayer journey. Make a continual list of prayer needs. Lynn and I frequently during the week, we just have something else added to it or something else in every date or something. I would encourage you to take a notebook, do something. This is very basic, but you and I need to get back to the basic so that we can see Christ moving more in our lives so he'll move through our lives. Be like Abraham, carry the fire. You read the book of Genesis where Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. He didn't just go out there with whatever. He had some kind of a pot. The Bible says he carried the fire in obedience to do what God had told him to do. We need to be fire carriers. We need to let Christ put something in our life that there's a smoke coming out of us that's evidence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Be like the disciples. Do what they did. Sure, they had problems. Sure, they, they messed up. But somehow, someway, they came back to their senses. Even if you were like Moses, think about Moses. Sometimes we talk about Moses. And just to think, he was put in a basket. He was rescued. He was raised at somebody else's expense. And he grew up. He messed up. He ran in a way from God. He cut somebody's ear off. He killed an Egyptian. Not cut somebody. He killed an Egyptian. He buried him. But yet through all of his bad mistakes and ever, at 80 years of age, God called Moses to lead the children. I don't care how old or how young you are. God wants to use you. He's not finished with you yet. He ain't finished with you yet. 
I don't make a public example. I can see much, but old Brother Delbert out there, man. I look at him. I don't know how old the man is, but he's older than I am. But I'm thinking of all the activities this guy gets. He serves on the board. He does ministry behind the scenes. He and his wife that some of you will never know about. God knows, and there's other of you who don't think. I'm here to tell you God wants to use you. He does, he does, he does. And he'll do it if you'll let him. And whenever you leave this church going out that door, I promise you, you ought to have a burning message in your heart that somehow the people in the world around you, there's something that radiates out of you that says there's something that I want that that person has. And when you come to the house of God, you ought to come with a message and a song in your heart instead of gloom and despair and agony. I looked at that DVD, uh, I guess that's what you call it, uh, with the missions thing and the, and, the, and, the, and the people around the, the world and all that. We've got it so good that it just stinks. We're so blessed. I look at those people, some of them don't have shoes. I probably got a half a dozen pair plus. In fact, a pastor called me from up in, in, in the Wichita Falls section. He's bringing me a pair of shoes tomorrow. He, he got at a sale somewhere. I don't care where he got them. If they're comfortable, I'll wear them and be thankful to God. It didn't cost me anything. You see what I'm saying? God provides. If I wanted money for a Diet Coke, I just have to see Linda. I have to behave myself for two weeks, but I, I can get one from her. We are blessed. You understand what I'm saying? And yet the world around us is on their way to hell. And we don't care enough. Be strong and courageous. And then over there in chapter 3, i got to get ready to close. The pastor's wife is yawning on me. But anyway, chapter 3, it says, this is our responsibility. No where we sit. It says, Joshua told him, he said, consecrate yourself. Because tomorrow, we're going to do over. We're going over. We're going to where we're supposed to be. Consecrate yourself. Every day, consecrate yourself. Get a hold of Jesus as you're starting to get out of bed. Consecrate yourself. God, what do you want to do in my life today? Who am I going to speak to? Whose path am I going to cross? When I go into Sam's in the morning time, I don't go in there just because i got to get groceries and supplies. I'm going there to see who's got a frown on their face, who's hurting. I want to put my arm on their shoulder. I want to encourage them with the word of God. I want to do something to help them see Jesus. I walk into Mia's donut place. I don't eat the donuts because I'm not supposed to. I wish I could. If it wasn't with my sugar blood up, I would eat one, whether I'm supposed to or not. But it does, so I don't. I walk in there, I say, good morning, folks. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> you see, you're here. We're not just called to be a little light. Sometimes we need to be a mirror. We need to reflect the light. You need to ask yourself the question, what am I going to be today, a light or a mirror? <laughs> Do something for Jesus. Make a difference. If Jesus comes, my goodness, what are you going to give to him? Ah, my goodness. My, my, my. Okay. So I want to encourage you. This is 2015, this is April the 19th, whatever it is, 2015. Next year, six months, three months from now, this church should not be the same. Because, bless God, we're going to say, yes, we're going to be the doers of the word instead of just hearers of the word. We're going to make everybody in the pictorial a target for Jesus. Everybody is a target for Jesus. If they ain't in here worship, excuse me, if they're not in here worshiping Jesus, my dad had a dictionary with the word ain't in it, so that's why I remember that old Webster's. Not proper, but anyway. Not the preferred one. But here's the thing. We've got to be so on target for the loss. We've got Jesus in us, and the world needs Jesus. Ha. Huh. Here we go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and the head of the church, and in his presence, we meet as a congregation to bless as your minister, Pastor Brian Hyatt. In so much as this Solomon Act involves mutual obligations, I call upon you to unite in a covenant of dedication. Pastor, would you please come and repeat after me? Pastor did not know I was going to do this. I didn't even ask his permission. I just felt this is what the Lord wanted me to do. God bless you. If you'll repeat after me, please. Willingly, Willingly do, I affirm do I affirm my ordination vows, my ordination vows believing, with all my heart believing with all my heart that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the, Christ the Son of the living God, the Son of the living God 
and accepting the Holy Scriptures as inspired of God through the Holy Spirit. It is my sincere desire to devote my life to the ministry of the Word, to live as to bring credit and not dishonor to the gospel which I preach and to fulfill to my utmost ability the office of a good minister of Jesus Christ. Thank you, sir. Would you have a seat just a minute? Will the elders, deacons, ministry leaders, teachers, and music ministers please stand? If you work on the ministry team in any way, thank you. I want you to repeat after me. Excuse me. All you're going to do is say, we do or we will, after I read it to you. Do you severely and collectively acknowledge the responsibility of the offices to which you have been chosen? Do you renew your pledge of loyalty to the church and the service to which you have been appointed? Do you promise to minister to all the material affairs and oversight and to maintain the reputation of good report? Do you purpose to cooperate with the Holy Spirit-led unity with the pastor God has placed here? Thank you. You may be seated. No, excuse me. I want the whole congregation to stand. Pastor Brian, will you please come forward? This is a beautiful prayer shawl that the elders purchased for this great pastor. And I would encourage you to pray for this man and his wife every day because you have difficulty understanding the shoes in which they walk every hour of every day, waiting on God for direction, for words, for wisdom, for his anointing, for purpose. Everything has to come from God. And so it creates a challenge for both of them. And, and as a husband and wife, it's just going to stretch them. But there's nothing too hard for God, and there's nothing God can't do. And God has called him. I know he has. I bless you for following the mind of God to put these people into this office. And I salute you for your support of them. Pastor, would you please repeat after me to the crowd. Brethren, brethren, brethren standing, with you, standing with you, I affirm my willingness. To be, your pastor. to be your pastor, and now covenant with you, and now covenant with you that in the strength and grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, I will live a holy, I will live a holy and circumspect life, circumspect life among, you among you for an example, for an example and, will diligently and will diligently and faithfully endeavor, faithfully endeavor to perform all the duties, perform all the duties of, a good minister of a good minister of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ on behalf of this congregation. To the, glory of his name to the glory of his name and the edification of his church. And the edification of his church. Thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, we collectively hereby declare blessings upon Pastor Brian Hyatt and his wife to be properly blessed as the minister and pastor of this congregation of the Cornerstone Church. And we commend to you the grace of God in the discharge of all your duties, duties as a minister of the gospel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for thank you. Thank you very much. I love you. Have you seen me? Thank you. Thank you. And now, Father, I thank you for your presence here today. I thank you, God, for the divine appointments that you make. And God, I pray like never before that we as a fellow believers, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we will do everything we can to uphold their arms, to strengthen them before you, Lord, to be supportive of their efforts and direction. And God, help us, Lord, everyone to declare before you, not only today, but every day, that we're going to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. And we bless you, Lord, for all this. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Paul, Miss Linda, for being here. And Life Challenge, we we love you guys. I want to quickly say just thank you to the church family. Your vote of confidence in us was just incredibly humbling for Lisa and I and Matt. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to work. There's no there's no rest. We've got a world to win. <laughs>